I'm a member of Minnesota Workers United. I'm also a rank and file union member of UFCW 663. I'm really honored to be up here on May Day, International Workers Day. Minnesota Workers United is a group of rank and file unionists and workers dedicated to class struggle unionism. And I want to be really clear about what that means on International Workers Day. When we say class struggle unionism as we stand here in front of the third precinct, that means that we don't support the police, we don't support their bullshit police unions. And when we say free Palestine, it means that we don't support the reactionary unions in Israel either. So we're going to bring up our first speaker. It's going to be Kelly from Twin Cities Coalition for Justice. Please give Kelly a round of applause. Immigrants. 
people have a right to work. People have a right to not just a livable wage, but a thriving wage. And people definitely have the right to organize and advocate for their communities. One of the ways that we can support immigrant and workers' rights is by making sure that the state does not have the power to use the police to attack us, to stop our demonstrations, to imprison our organizers. We can do this by having community control of the police through, to a, through a Civilian Police Accountability Commission. We deserve to determine how our communities are policed. We deserve to determine how police are held accountable for their actions. We deserve to determine how resources are allocated. We deserve to define what community safety looks like, period! We have petitioners here today. If you haven't signed yet and you're a Minneapolis voter, we are still collecting signatures. Petitioners, please raise your hands. Okay, I see one over there. I see one in the middle of the crowd. I feel like we have a couple more here. So yes, they will be here. Yep, one up here. They will be here the entire time. Find them. We still need, we still need signatures. And then to end, I want you all to, I want to invite all of you to celebrate with us because today we are making history. This morning, TCC for J turned in over 10,000 signatures to the city of Minneapolis. This, this was years of work. Organizing like this does not happen overnight, and history is not made overnight. This was years of work, and we are finally seeing it move even further forward. CPAC on the ballot. We will have a Civilian Police Accountability Commission. We will get community control of the police. When MPD kills on control, kills on patrol, how do we stop them? When MPD kills on patrol, how do we stop them? When MPD kills on patrol, how do we stop them? It has been by our side since the very first May 1st. We came back out here in 2006 and every year since. So with great pride and honor and extreme applause, everyone please welcome Kassan Kualikwa!
Filipino immigrant, and I have been a member of MIRAC for about a year now. May 1st is a special day for immigrant rights. Around the world, it is celebrated as International Workers' Day, and marked by marches and protests led by workers in nearly every country. But here in the U.S., May 1st has another meaning. It's the day of immigrants and workers, and it's because we fought for it. In 2006, all over this country, it was immigrants who took this day back. We see immigrants on the battle lines, every facet of struggle against oppression. Immigrants lifted up International Workers' Day, and it is the responsibility of all workers to uplift and fight for immigrant rights. That's right. Many here today probably have seen the constant and vicious attacks on immigrants in states like Texas, Florida, Alabama, Iowa, and many more. 10 states have now passed laws that deputize and even force local and state police to enforce immigration laws. Shame! Shame. We are living in one of the most dangerous moments in history to be an immigrant, and we need to stand up and fight back. MIRAC is part of a large and strong coalition demanding Minnesota pass the North Star Act. And in case you don't know what it is, it is a bill that would prohibit any local or state police or jails from acting like ICE agents or helping assist in the deportations of immigrants. We need this bill now. Minnesota DFL leaders have refused to support it. Shame! We know they won't hold a trifecta next year. And we know there is a real threat that Trump will win presidency and begin the mass detention and deportation of immigrants. Shame! But not in Minnesota. The time to act is now. We need everyone here today to call their state representatives and demand they support the North Star Act. MIRAC fights for legalization for all. We will take to the streets to demand protection from deportation, to demand equality in our workplaces, 
to demand demilitarization of the border, but we will not stop until we win legalization for all. Immigrant power is real. Worker power is real. When we uplift each other's struggles, we are undefeatable. El Pueblo Unido, jamás será vencido. 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 How's everybody doing? Happy International Workers' Day. This is a proletarian holiday celebrated all across the globe. It started following a police attack against a rally during a general strike for the eight-hour day. That sparked May Day celebrations and celebrations of labor struggle and worker struggle all throughout the world. Uh, our next speaker is Eid Ali. He's the founder and president of the Minnesota Uber Lyft Drivers Association. They've been waging an incredible struggle here and, and they're going to win. Good afternoon, brothers, sisters, and fellow champions of justice. My name is E. Dali. I am the proud president of Minnesota Uber and Lyft Drivers Association, also known MULDA. Today, as we gather here on International Workers' Day, we stand united in our fight for fair treatment, dignity, and respect for all workers. No matter where they came from or what they work, or work, what work they do. Three years ago, a group of determined drivers and I found Molda out of shared frustration with the exploitation we face at the hands of powerful rideshare companies. We realized that alone we might be ignored, but together we are unstoppable. Since then we have fought tirelessly to ensure our voices are heard from city halls to the steps of our state capital. Last year, despite, despite our efforts, our bill to secure a living wage and basic rights for rideshare drivers was vetoed by the governor. But did we stop there? No. We regrouped, refocused, and successfully passed our agenda at the city level in Minneapolis. Yeah! Today, we're back, stronger than ever, pushing out bill that through the state legislature with the support of powerful allies and unions. As we mark today, we are reminded of the tireless quote, if you are not at the table, guess what? You are on the menu. We have taken our seat at the table. We have legislators on both the House and Senate championing our cause, and our hope and determination have never been greater. Today we march not just for not just for the right of Today we march not just for the rights of rideshare drivers, but for all workers. We march for those who toll in shadows and in light, 
whose hands build our cities and whose sweat water is the seeds of our progress. We march because injustice to one worker is injustice to all. So let's link our arms, raise our voices, and march together towards a future where every worker is valued, every family thrives, and every community stands tall, united in solidarity. Yeah. To my fellow workers, to everyone who dreams of justice and strives for equality, Mulda stands with you. Will you stand with us? Yeah. Thank you, and let the march continue. I'll give it up, Reed, one more time. Yeah. All right, so our next speaker is going to be from the Minnesota Anti-War Committee. The Minnesota Anti-War Committee has been organizing within the Minnesota Free Palestine Coalition since it was founded in November and has been struggling the struggle of anti-imperialism for over 20 years. And as my friend DGP set up here, May Day is a proletarian holiday, and when we talk about these things, it means that we support the liberation for all oppressed people, and that's what the anti-war committee has been fighting for for over 20 years. That means that when we stand here and we say workers of the world unite, it means that we stand for the liberation of the people of occupied Hawaii, to Congo, to the Sudan, to Swaziland, all the way to East Asia, and all the way around the world of all oppressed peoples. So next up is Sabri Wazwaz from the Anti-War Committee. All right, everyone, I just want to remind you the importance of what's going on in Palestine also involves what's going on here. If you haven't seen it, despite everything, everything they've lost in Gaza, children are coming out of their tents, coming out of their tents, signs that they made. They are thanking the students, the brave and amazing and wonderful students across America, thanking them, thanking the students in America saying thank you for standing up for us. If you don't know, all across the apartheid wall, they have portraits, murals of Malcolm X, of George Floyd, of, of George Jackson from the Black Lives Panther. They have all of these pictures all over the apartheid wall because the struggle is won. It's not a new struggle. What's going on in Palestine has been going on for decades. Malcolm X spoke about it. The Black Panther spoke about it. Many people, many great people spoke about it. Please understand that our struggle is one so when we say free Palestine it doesn't just say free Palestine it means stand up for the Black Lives Matter stand up for the LGBT community it means stand up for immigrant rights it means stand up for the workers rights it means stand up for everyone's rights so when we say free Palestine it means free everyone when we say solidarity it means solidarity for everyone across America across the Congo and Sudan everywhere so please remember guys this holiday connects all of us together all of us if children as young as three years old could come out of a tent after they just endured over 200 days of consecutive bombing and they make a sign telling the amazing courageous students here in America thank you just imagine how much it means to one another when we all stand up for one another. That means right now, someone in Sudan, in Congo, is hearing me talk about Sudan and Congo, and it's gonna mean a lot to them. And us together, what we're doing, it's gonna mean to all of those people across the globe. So everyone raise your fist and say this chant with me. Together now, here and forever. Together now, here and forever. We fight for all. Now and forever! We fight for all! Now and forever! Together here! Now together! Together here! Now together! We fight for all! Now and forever! We fight for all! Now and forever! Thank you and God bless everyone.
Aubrey said, all of our struggles are connected and the IDF's terrible and brutal treatment of Palestinians is being taught to U.S. police forces here in what's called the Deadly Exchange. Our next speaker is Tashira Garraway, who, the, the founder of Families Supporting Families Against Police Violence and an incredible voice against police repression and in our movement for black liberation. Tashira. Again, I'm the founder of an organization where there are many families that have lost their loved ones at the hands of police here in Minnesota. And the father of my son, Justin Tigan, was found dead in a dumpster, brutally beaten after being pulled over by the St. Paul Police, August 19, 2009. And I'm here today to tell you thank you to all of you that are standing up for human life. Do not let anybody ever make you feel like what you're standing for is wrong. If you know in your heart what you're standing up for is right. If you're standing up for human beings, no matter what they look like, no matter what they have or what they don't have, no matter what the sexual or what their sexual orientation is, if you're standing up for a human being and you're standing up for righteousness, if you're out here putting your life and your body on the line, I want to say thank you for fighting for what you believe and what you know in your heart is right, no matter what. As human beings, we have a duty, no matter if it's in Palestine, no matter if it's someone being here in America being lynched, because that's what I call this modern day lynchings. What's going on in Palestine right now is modern day lynchings, it's genocide. What's going on in America at the hands of law enforcement is genocide. And if you are standing against that, we have a duty as human beings, when you see a human being being hurt or harmed for any reason at all, if you see a human being hurting and suffering at the hands of another human being, we are here to serve each other as human beings. We're not here to harm and hurt each other. And if you see that, you have a duty. You have an actual duty as a human being with a heart to stand up for another human being. So I ask you all, because we have this duty, we have a duty to love one another. We have a duty to be here to accept one another. We have a duty to fight against these injustices. We cannot sit by and watch it idly. We must stand up. So I ask that you lift your fists up right now and repeat after me. We have a duty to fight for our freedom. Raise your hands. They are the lead banner. All banners behind that banner 
everybody not holding a banner or not an amazing, beautiful dancer like these beautiful people, you go behind the banners. I'm going to say it one more time. My beautiful native siblings, leave banner behind them, other banners behind them, and then everybody behind the banners. Raise your hand if you understand. Raise your hand if you understand. I wasn't trying to make a rhyme, it just rhyme. Okay, let me get back to my MC. This International Workers' Day, we also want to highlight labor struggles that are happening right here in our backyard. Two years ago, one of the most exciting labor actions happened in our city, and that's that MFT's teachers and ESPs went on strike. They went on strike and won material gains for teachers and ESPs and for our students. Our next speaker is a class struggle unionist, is a black liberation leader, the first vice president of the MFT, Marsha Howard. No, 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 they can still do that because I know one thing. You see all these flags out here, right? Rip yourself! You see, you hear all these chants out here. You better say your chant loud. I don't care if every helicopter and every news camera catches us saying the shit we gotta say while the eyes are on us. Whether it's about freeing Palestine, yeah. or workers' rights, yeah. or funded schools, y'all yeah. all know one thing, it's all connected. Yeah. It's all connected. Yeah. You could have been anywhere else right now, but you're here, yeah. arm and arm, foot and foot, next to somebody who is talking about what we need to be talking about, not just in these streets, but at the table as well. It is all connected. I'm not a pause for applause type person because it is very critical that we get messages out. And some of us gotta go back to their alma mater tonight because they need us over there too. Y'all know what I'm talking about. This fight may feel like different groups fight, but it is all connected. We're all in this together. Yeah. I am in a union, Minneapolis Federation of Teachers Local 59. My name is Marsha Howard. I am currently the first vice president. But although the teachers got a TA, understand that united we stand and divided, we fall. And we not falling because schools don't run without educational support professionals. No, they don't. And we can show them better than we can tell them. Don't, don't y'all ever think that we ain't got solidarity with the ESPs. What they're about to do is show just how important they are. Now we got prom coming up. We got graduation coming up. We got federal compliance for our special ed happening right now. Look at here. Schools don't run without educational support professionals. We'd like to see them try. We'd like to see them try. So when we call for solidarity, that's what it's going to look like. Strike fund, hardship fund, strike loans, everything it needs. It's May. It's first day of May. It's the first of the month, right? It's a three paycheck month. Mighty fine month to, you know, get out in these streets, yeah? Because when we fight, 
We win! When we fight, we win! When we fight, we win! Come on, y'all, say it again! When we fight, we win! When we fight, we win! When we fight, we win! Let me tell you right now, that is not just for the fight for ESPs and MFT 59. We're not only gonna have to fight for decent living wages, we're also yeah. gonna have to fight from the little game that they're playing, yeah. where yeah. they're trying to make Minneapolis feel like a city that's on the brink of insolvency. Yeah. Now, we might be broke, but I know this city ain't. Yeah. We might be broke, but I know this state ain't. Yeah. Don't let them run game on you. You don't let them play in your damn face and try to say, because, oh, we're different as a city. And underneath that, y'all, let me tell you how anti-blackness works. Anti-indigenity and anti-blackness works just like this. We are the Swiss Army knives of white supremacy. They can say, but what about the black, brown, and indigenous people? And we can be the problem the goose that laid the golden egg, the scapegoat, or the sacrificial lamb. Y'all see that happening here. You seeing that happening overseas. They're gonna say, oh, but what about, but what about, what about freedom? What about equality? What about overturning this capitalist system? sit at a table where my people are on the menu. So instead of sitting at that table, y'all need to get ready to flip them bitches. We gotta stay strong. We gotta stay strong. They gonna spin it. Our newspapers of record gonna spin it. All of it is going to get spun in order to sow seeds of discord. There are people right now, when we march four blocks, a little bit of them inside want to be like, shh, shh, to some of y'all. Talk your shit. Yeah. Let them hear it. All the way across the world, let them hear what we're doing. You have to. You have to. They are waiting for us. They're holding out for us. You know we caused half of that damn problem. Yes. And who gonna fix it? Us. Yes. We will, you and I. You can't have union without you and I. This is about labor, y'all. This is about labor. Every act of service, every day you clock in, every day you get up to do something that ain't for you, for somebody else. That is labor. Yep. And this whole city, this whole nation would shut down if it wasn't for you. Yep. Let them know. Y'all better start flexing power. Because where there's people, where there's people, where there's people, and don't you forget it. Don't you forget it. We got this, y'all. We do. They scared right now. They scared. And they need to be scared. Because we are here, and we're going to get bigger and grow larger and larger, and we're going to bring our homies with us, right? We're going to be like, where were you? Come on with us. This is not a moment. This is a movement. Yeah. We gonna terraform this nation or whatever remains of it after we rebuild something that we all can be free in. Yeah. MFT, if you out here, let me tell you, we gonna continue to fight for these students. Yeah. To share it, if you out here, we gonna continue to fight for our freedom. Yeah. And that means all of our rel relatives here on this stolen land. Because when we fight, we win. When we fight, we win. When we fight, we win. Say it again. When we fight, we win. When we fight, we win. When we fight, we win. I every single one of you. Hey, before. Before I hand it to my sister over here to
to do some chants in Spanish. I want to do a chant going off what she said. Yes. And you have to feel it. You have to feel it in your heart because it has to hurt. So, off what she said, I want to hear you loud. If I see you and I think you ain't going to put it, I'm just going to say, you know what, don't bother. Together we stand, together we fall. 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 Together we shout. Say it. Together we shout. Together we shout. Together we shout. Freedom for all. Together we shout. Freedom for all. Together we stand, together we fall. Together we stand, together we fall. Together we shout. Freedom for all. Together we shout. Freedom for all. Together we shout. Freedom for all. Together we shout, freedom for all. Together we shout, freedom for all. Minnesota, make some noise. As a member of the Climate Justice Committee, the Climate Justice Committee has been doing the on-the-ground work to organize and mobilize around environmental racism here in the East Phillips neighborhood at the Smith Foundry and the Red Roof Depot, C.J. McCormick. I want to open up by analyzing a chant we've already done and highlighting a certain line. Now the Asada chant opens up with, say it after me, it is our duty to fight for our freedom! It is our duty to love and protect one another! And here's the really important part, it is our duty to win! We'll do the rest of the chant later, I'm doing a thing right now. But I want to highlight, it is our duty to win. Because I don't think that actually gets talked about enough in America. Where the struggle is kind of abstract, you know? We as environmental organizers can do things like lock ourselves to pipelines and obstruct construction without getting cut to pieces and shot at. And that is because of the struggles that we have done historically. That is because of indigenous struggle. That is because of union struggle. That is because of black liberation struggle that have enabled us to struggle. And I want to say, I want to highlight it is our duty to win because we are around campaigns that are fucking winning! Mirac has already done work to get through driver's licenses for all registration. Minneapolis Federation of Teachers has already won a strike in recent memory. <laughs> Twin Cities Coalition for Justice just this morning turned in. Come on, yeah! FPD kills a patrol. How do we stop them? FPD kills a patrol. How do we stop them? They turned in over 10,000 signatures. Fucking everyone I knew, almost everyone I knew who was an organizer threw down for that. Got at least a few dozen signatures. Some people got thousands, some people got hundreds, some people got twelve. And all of those count because we all do it together. And because of that, that's going to be on the ballot this November. Yes! And when I say it is our duty to win and that we're around campaigns and struggles that fucking win, I mean from the river to the sea. Shit. The call is right over here. The call right by 
the cabin to get this shit. The car helps us win. Because when we fight, we win. When we fight, we win. When we fight, we win. I can't fucking hear you. When we fight, we win. When we fight, we win. When we fight, which brings me to this piece of shit right here. Which honestly, if you've been around during work hours, is a disgrace to shit. It smells so much worse. The green white smells so bad sometimes, oh my god. But, as was said before me, this is the next step in this good, caring liberal state to give a shit about East Phillips, to give a shit about the actual histories of environmental racism. In a city where racism is declared a public health crisis so often, and Minneapolis loves to say that, they will absolutely fight tooth and nail to keep piece of shit polluters like this in place. Shay! Shay! But what else can you expect from a city where you can see a public transit bus with your on Dakota land plastered all over it, right next to homeless Dakota women on the bench? Shay! Shut down Smith Boundary because we've already won. We've already won so many things. The students on campus, I think they're gonna fucking win. Yeah! From the river to the sea. This is the next step for us, but it's not the only thing. You know, I talk about winning, but as a climate organizer, I'm not trying to say shit's all rainbow and daisies. I'm not trying to say that I take this lightly because as a climate organizer, I take winning very fucking seriously. So I want to thank you all for coming out tonight and I want to finish the chant we started earlier. It is our duty to fight for our freedom. It is our duty to fight for our freedom. It is our duty to love and protect one another. It is our duty to love and protect one another. It is our duty to win! It is our duty to win! We have nothing to lose but our chains! We have nothing to lose but our chains! It is our duty to fight for our freedom! It is our duty to fight for our freedom! It is our duty to love and protect one another! It is our duty to love and protect one another! It is our duty to fucking win! It is our duty to fucking win! <laughs> we have nothing to lose but our chains! 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 I cannot wait to fucking win with you! Hear me now? Yeah! All right, when I say union, you say power. Union! Power! 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 All right, so our next speaker is a clerical worker at the University of Minnesota with the Clerical Workers Union of Ask Me 3800. Please welcome Julie. I'm Julie Zenker, I organize with several grassroots coalitions, and I'm with Ask Me 3800, and I hate my job. I work as the clerk, aka the resident poor for capital project management at the University of Minnesota, our favorite land grab shell corporation. 
I lovingly call it hauling ass for Satan. As workers, we have more in common with each other, with workers of the world, or even the homeless man down the street, than with the boss. That's right! Last week I observed UMPD arrest an encampment of youth. Yeah! They had a ratio of six cops to uh, one single unarmed person when arresting them. Yeah! At several points, cops got in protesters' faces before forcibly pulling them up and handcuffing them. Yeah! I told one pig, you don't need to do this. You're essentially scabbing a picket line and you're legally and technically represented by a union. Note my sardonic tone. It's a fake union. He told me I didn't know what a scab was, not knowing that I'm an active steward for Ask Me 3800, clerical, technical, and healthcare workers at the U of M. That cop griped that he gets this shit all the time, to which I say, boo fucking who. It's good that they get shit. That means that people recognize that armed cops aren't workers. They are strike breakers and property protectors, just like they were during the Haymarket Uprising of 1886, in which thousands of workers were coalescing in a general strike, and many people were slaughtered by the police. Yay! UMPD arrested an AFSCME member solidifying this role. They further threatened to arrest everyone in the vicinity watching, including a legal observer. As a union steward, I promise, if the boss touches this work, if the boss touches this worker, we will fight them tooth and nail. That's the executive elites kept trying to squash the popped up encampments, but encampment rallies grew at the end. That's why I've been sitting <laughs> Every time cops showed up in droves, the community showed up in greater droves. At one point, literally chasing them away scared. Hopefully the cops went away to go mystery solving with the Scooby gang on some actual crimes. Like the three female students violently robbed in Dickytown while they deployed 150 more cops for the encampment that night with riot gear and batons. More likely, they huddled to connive on squashing this movement. But they will never succeed in squashing us. And all we want is an end to genocide and apartheid. There is no issue more important to me coming from a military family plagued with military trauma than ending war and genocide. I've been a vocal critic of the administration every step of the way this past week and a half. And I don't mince words when I do so. I've been sending multiple emails to executives on the Board of Regents and calling them out on social media. I know some of these executives. They're very charismatic. It's easy to forget. They have capital interests directly opposite to ours. Excellent. It's easy to disengage with politics so I can bypass being the receiving end of any tensions at the office. But not only do we have a vested survival interest in maintaining solidarity with workers of the world, even when it's uncomfortable, but the moral consequences of disengaging are too great. Yes. Those who came before us in the struggle told us so. Reverend Dr. King said, true peace is not merely the absence of tension, it is the presence of justice. That's right! For me, I will usher in tension when my public tension, which should be an enviable prize, is invested in direct enemies of world peace. As a public sector union worker, we negotiated a pension. Um, it's being invested in the multi-millions in companies profiteering off of genocidal warmongering and Israeli apartheid, not to mention fossil fuels. People who come to work for a large public university, whether that's a technic technician administering to sick humans and animals, an unarmed security guard being made to dress like a cop for no reason, an admin assistant providing customer service to youth going after their dreams, or a teamster worker literally keeping the property working through manual labor. Usually you come to the U for a sense of belonging and purpose, to help future generations be better, faster, stronger, and smarter. I don't want my pension. It's blood money. Justice and blood money cannot coexist. So if we're following Reverend Dr. King's advice, we must usher in tension. Four people on the State Board of Investment can ease that tension. 
Tim Wall, Steve Simon, Julie Blaha, and Keith Ellison. Many of us door knocked for Keith Ellison. He won his last election by a razor thin margin. He really, really needs us, his base. But that doesn't appear to be his calculus. He has been mostly silent, as many of you, us have pointed out, but he has said something. He told NPR that divesting is the least effective way to address the issue, despite his involvement in the BDS movement against apartheid South Africa. He hot potatoed the issue to his former colleagues in Congress and said of BDS activists that the money didn't belong to us unless we happened to be pensioners. Wrong! Public pensions are funded by tax dollars, which means everyone must benefit. If you are considered a taxpayer, your tax dollars slither into it. Walls, Blaha, and Simon, all Democrats who have gone on the record to support Zionism, have issued predictable talking points about fiscal conservatism. We need the State Board of Investments to show some spine and take action against Israel as we have with genocidal countries before. This means divestment. This means taking care of our own homeless instead of using our tax dollars to make people overseas homeless. As a queer disabled person who has experienced homelessness as a youth and who's worked at a large homeless shelter for five years, I relate to that call intimately. Democrats convinced me to vote for them for the past 15 years as part of the remedy for, that, for my oppression. This year, that's a snake oil sales pitch. I've never received more shit or threats for being queer disabled than when I stepped into pro-Palestine activism. From liberals, I am abandoning Democrat and establishment Democrats. I will not vote for a straight blue ticket this year. Like worker and student movements throughout history in which people have suffered and died for what protections and freedoms we have today, we flip off the oligarchs and rely on each other as we organize a movement. We will not eat cake! When Palestine is under attack, what do we do? Stand up, fight back! When Palestine is under attack, what do we do? Stand up, fight back! When workers' rights are under attack, what do we do? Stand up, fight back! When immigrant rights are under attack, what do we do? Stand up, fight back! What do we do? Stand up, fight back! What do we do? Stand up, fight back! I'm very, very excited to introduce our last speaker. The people of Palestine showed the way forward. Break down the walls, resist barbarism. And now, students are helping show us the way for what resistance and solidarity looks like in the U.S. and across the globe. I'm really excited to introduce Shushmet, who's a member of Students for a Democratic Society and one of the Minnesota Nine arrested and subsequently banned from their campus from apartheid Israel. When Palestine is under attack, what do we do? Stand up, fight back! When Palestine is under attack, what do we do? Stand up, fight back! When Gaza is under attack, what do we do? Stand up, fight back! When Gaza is under attack, what do we do? Stand up, fight back! What do we do? Stand up, fight back! What do we do? Stand up, fight back! I'm a proud member of your men, Students for a Democratic Society. Yeah. Part of the Divest Coalition and one of the MN9. Yeah. We've been working on a divestment campaign for the past seven months. And when we saw the encampment pop up in Colombia, we knew it was time for us to escalate in turn. As I'm sure you all know, I was arrested not even three hours after we built our first encampment. Shame! Shame! I'm sure the university wanted to squash 
watch us stop our movement before even anyone even saw it. But did it work? No! Hell no! Instead, we saw the community mobilized to support us in ways I didn't even think were possible. We spent a week playing peekaboo with the cops, <laughs> <laughs> causing chaos on campus until we finally had the power to set up a permanent encampment on Monday. <laughs> and we've been fighting off the police ever since. Yep. Every night, I see my friends and fellow organizers standing side by side with people who've never even been to a protest before, standing unflinchingly against the police because we know our cause is just. Right. Despite the university locking us out of buildings, shutting off access to water, where I wonder where they got that one from, <laughs> access to restrooms, and despite UMPD threatening arrest multiple times a day, we're still standing strong because we are stronger than any bullshit administration can throw at us. That's right. The students have received a tremendous amount of support for the, from the community. Truly, I don't think we could have done it without you guys. When I think of how quickly and how like militantly you guys mobilized for us, I honestly want to cry. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I want to say, we have been receiving incredible amount from our workers. Yeah. Yeah. Staff and faculty from the university have been standing in solidarity with the encampment from day one. From helping us navigate administration's bullshit, to risking arrests, to forming a human chain around protesters because faculty wants to protect our students, the workers have been standing in unconditional solidarity with the students and the people of Palestine.
all so much for coming. We're going to end with a...